last year, for every pound rent you paid, 15 and fivepence ain't me went to the moneylenders. So if you take 15 and fivepence ain't me out of every pound you're paying, you get some indication of what your rents really are. And every time the GLC are borrowing money, it is going on your backs. You are keeping the money lenders, you are keeping the bankers, and not the bankers looking after your interest or the GLC looking after your interest. And the rent increase is not just for one year, not just for two years, but it will continue on until such time as the GLC of a 70, 80, and even 100% increase. There is going to be a cutback in repairs. How much is that going to cost? Even the local council some years ago estimated that to do the repairs of a council flat was 10 shillings per week. So instead of putting the rents up 10 bob, they stopped the decorations. So with the 10 bob which they are demanding from us, plus the 10 bob we, which we're going to pay for repairs and decorations, our increase this year is a pound. And we say to Mr. Cutler and his band of brigands in County Hall that we are not paying a penny more now, tomorrow, or never. And if they can't manage their own affairs, then get out and put the tenants in, in command. Yes. We say how they can save money. Cut back on some of these office boys they've got. Yeah, yeah. Do they want ten men to collect one bloody rent? How much is being wasted in the administration offices of the Great Alarm and Council? How many jobs have been made for the boys? And we say to the GLC, the building of future houses is not the responsibility in the main of existing tenants of the GLC. Houses which are going to be built should be a rate responsibility and not a GLC tenant responsibility. This is why they want our increases, to purchase land for the future. We can tell the GLC where they could rehouse thousands of people next week without laying one blasted brick. We can tell them in Tottenham Court Road is a huge office block that has never been occupied from the day it was built. There is no rates being paid on it. It has the protection of your police force, the uses of the, of the fire brigade, it has the uses of the sanitary authorities, and we, the tenant, have got to keep the maintainer. And we say to the GLC, take these empty blocks over, pay the owners a half percent interest rate, convert them for flats whereby they can be usefully occupied and rate could be collected. We have got the answer. We can win this campaign. We must win this campaign. If we don't win, then my advice to each and every one of you is to cut your bloody throats. Because they'll take every penny you've got to pay their demands, their blood money. Keep together. Don't be misled by these reports you're going to get. Stick together. Not a penny on the rent. Not a penny more. We can win. We will win. We will smash the rent policy of the GLC. got a 3% wage increase only, how the heck can the county all expect the man to pay? 70 and two thirds. Yeah, well this year, this year, this this year but year. over an overall year. picture it'll be 70%, yeah. and also in the, in the end, that what the GLC are advocating is that a man should pay a third of his money away in rents. See, all these hours is that the absorbent rents have been put on, and a lot of estates, they've already paid for themselves. Assuming that they cost in the region of £2,000 to put up and build, which is giving it a good estimate, the rent paid in them alone is well over that. So all that is, is, is being paid now is profit. That has got to be paid back to money lenders, banks and whoever the council borrowed the money off of. Prior to the war, to live in a council house, you were lucky to have a good landlord that looked after the house, the property and you paid a reasonable rent. But today, you live in a council house, you are now expected to do the best part of the interior decorating, you're expected to pay exorbitant rents, and you, you, in other words, 
So live under the council now is not a, 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 as it should be as years ago, as I say, you were lucky, but today it's like living under a bad private landlord. They told us straight that uh, we're going to pay a 70% increase over the course of three years. Yeah. Well, if I'm paying four and a half now, four pound ten now, it means in three years' time I'll be paying seven and a half, seven pounds ten, which isn't a working class rent, is it? Mm -hmm. Rents to get cheaper, not dearer. To get cheaper. Dearer, they're amount of I mean, I'll go. Yeah. land ain't nickel, the cheapness. Why they buy their property on cheap stuff, they buy it dirt yeah. cheap. There's three and things that don't do the tenants any good. Land speculation. Profits on building and money lenders. They want a bit of gardeners from the front to the back. Well, when we first heard about this rent increase, I just put my coat on and went round to find out what the rest of the neighbours thought about it. And I got such a good response, I started up our tenants association. And then we amalgamated with all the others, and this is the result. over 158,000 GLC tenants. There are 47,000 tenants on Teesside. There's tenants in Birmingham, there's tenants in Sheffield. Wherever there are tenants, there are, are tenants organisations. And this, whether anyone likes it or not, is the start of a new people's movement. But it's a tenants movement and it's not going to be controlled by any political party whatsoever. The political people have done it in the past. They've taken the people and they've led them. Where have they led them? To this situation where you've got wage freeze, rent exploitation. The people have come to a dead end. They've arrived at the position when they say, stop, we've had enough. You'll no doubt be hearing a report a little bit later how many people have been withholding the increases. I would like to give you some of the figures which we received in the Action Committee on Sunday and those were figures for the first week and some estates of course haven't yet had to pay the increase but these are figures which came in uh, reported on Sunday night at the Action Committee remember some tenants pay the first week some the second week Globe Road 85% Pepe's estate, 70%. Poplar and Limehouse, 90 to 100%. <laughs> Kingsmead, 88%. Mountview, 50%. <laughs> Beckentree, which has 29,000 GLC tenants, 55 to 60%. Maida Vale, 55%. Warwick estate, Every single member of the Tenants Association, which is about 80%, withheld the increases. Lansbury Estate, 87%. Oban House, which is a small estate, 95%. Minerva Estate, 75%. Hereford, over 50%. Gascoigne, 65%. Kingsdale, 70%. Uh, Sumner Estate, where they've just got started, only 9%. Now we know in other areas that uh, where they haven't got tenants associations at all, obviously everyone has paid up. The figure given in the evening news last week was 40% in Tower Hamlets and Hackney, 2% elsewhere. <laughs> well, they must have forgotten about Beckentree, which has got almost 30,000 tenants, where we had 55 to 60 percent. Now that's the first week. So in some cases that's only half of the estate which pays because they may collect from other brocks at the beginning of this week and we haven't got the reports in for this week yet because the rent hasn't yet been collected on many estates. So that's the position. So if any of you were thinking when you came to this meeting that you were alone, you can see that you weren't. in order to try and persuade everyone what a, a good thing it was that your rent was going up, it was said that 30,000 tenants would pay less rent from September the 30th. 
They were expected to pay out two and three quarter million pounds. It was expected that 43,000 tenants would qualify for the rebate. In fact, the figures which have come in, and these are GLC figures, they've only granted about 5,000 rebates, not 30,000 people paying less rent than they were before. In fact, the very opposite, because there were people who were previously getting social aid. At least 2,000 of those people who used to get social aid do not qualify for this new rebate scheme. We've always been very proud in Suffolk because we were one of the first estates in Hackney to fall. And up until this week, we have been the strongest. But I think we've got to move down and give second place to Trowbridge because they've beaten us. Um, we are 85% and I can't give a bow to the Trowbridge people who got 90% and good luck. because this is the only figure that we have proof of and we have absolute proof of this figure because as I've told you in the past we do the envelope system where we have volunteers collecting the rent and handing them over in bulk to the rent collector. The rent collector has been going around and saying did you know you're the only one that has withheld the increase today? Well I've been over there and I've been giving them some facts and figures and I think I've proved to them that they weren't the only one that withheld the increase today. The average council rent is still less than two pounds a week. Oh. <laughs> the, the, tenants, the tenants' income over 20 pounds a week. Indeed, this week's Prices and Incomes Board re a report reveals that some council homes have as much as £80 a week coming in. <laughs> uh, will you keep quiet, please, because, we're, because I want to go through this and tear it to pieces afterwards. It is utterly wrong that council tenants should be subsidised by private tenants who are often less well off. For every two council tenants earning less than £15 a week, there are three private tenants. Nor are many of the younger couples saving to buy homes of their own any more prosperous than the council tenants they help to support through rates and taxes. A building society survey yesterday showed that a quarter of its young customers were earning less than 20 pounds a week, uh, 20 pounds a week or less. Why should these young people with a gumption to invest four or five pounds of their income every week in buying their own home have to be, have to feather bed comfortably off council tenants? The whole housing setup in Britain is still shambles. Help should only go to those who can prove need, whether they live in a council house or in rented accommodation. The family, not the house, should receive the subsidy. This is the way to lift the burden that now weighs unfairly on the backs of private tenants and young couples buying a home of their own. Now the press, and I'm very fortunate here because 95% of what I'm going to say to you, you won't read a word about it in the press tomorrow. Because if you did, if they did, then the advertisers would be after the editor's body and believe me, he'll put his blue pencil through it, so don't let's kid ourselves on the press. When did you hear of we, of the working class, owning or controlling the press? When did you hear that the press would come out against Mr. Cutler and the crowd you've got at County Hall? Our old friend here, I'm not criticising him because he belongs to a trade union like I do and he's down here earning his daily bread. It's the bloke up there who's got the pencil and says, not this one, Charlie, go and get yourself a cup of tea, scrub that. <laughs> Those of us who have been long in this game know this, of course. We're not kidded about it either. And the tragedy is, of course, that you've heard complaints here tonight about this sketch and the mirror. And how many of you in this hall tomorrow will fly in the shop and buy the sketch and the mirror? Of course you will. Of course you'll go and buy it. You give your enemies the tools to beat you with. You've always done it and you'll continue to do it.
there are many, many people who are in this campaign who for the first time in their life have ever given a thought to someone else's problems and that's very important. All your life there's one thing you've dodged and that is letting your neighbour know how much you owe the landlord. Now boast about it! <laughs> boast about it! Well, I'm better than you, I'm 40. We're going to County Hall on the next demonstration and we're going to tell Mr Cutler and co, plus Tony Greenwood and co, that at the first threat of any eviction anywhere in London, we're going to advocate a total rent strike. Nothing. I thought she'd have done the best thing. Blow up Parliament to start with it in County Hall. Well, I did. I just think for the light. My name is uh, Len Smith and uh, I'm the organiser of the Transport and General Workers Union for Smithfield Market. Also, part of my responsibilities are Billingsgate Fish Market. We've had many resolutions asking the union what they're going to do about the rent increases that the GLC have recently imposed and indeed what are they going to do about the GLC as a landlord anyway. But my regional committee discussed this and decided to support the Smithfield branch and indeed have circularised all branches in the London and Home Counties area, asking them to send delegates this afternoon to go to the GLC and petition Mr Cutler and tell him that um, whilst he may have a problem this evening with the tenants, he's also got a problem with the trade unions and that um, it may well be that if our people get sufficiently incensed about the rent rises that are being put in now and the, the, the rent rises that are liable to come out in the future, he may find himself with some industrial action to contend with. There are other unions involved in this that already today, people from the Post Office Engineering Union, people from uh, SOGAT, who represent print, duck workers, both of the Blue and the White Union, and the Blue Union, as you know, is the union of the National Stevedores. They are represented uh, this afternoon on the march. We've had some clerical workers from the CAWU, and we've also had some workers from the Union of Shop Distributed and Allied Workers. What we're out to say to the GLC is that the trade unions are getting involved in the struggle. We've no doubt in our minds that they'll say to us, you ought to have something better to do. 
Well, then we think that we can have nothing better to do than protect our members' interests. But if any, any one of our members are going to be prosecuted in a court in relation to eviction, I feel that this union ought to make it plain to the GLC that we, if necessary, will take industrial to action to protect them. In the Thank you. 